Maintaining a normal pH is vital to cellular function and for achieving therapeutic outcomes of drug therapies. The pH represents the amount of acid in the body that is free and dissociated. This value is expressed as a negative logarithm expressed in moles per liter. Its range is 1 to 14 with pH of 7 representing neutral. A base to acid ratio of 20 to 1 or its equivalent in the bloodstream will result in a normal blood pH of 7.35 to 7.45. Any upset in this 20 to 1 ratio will result in an acid base disturbance. The blood buffer system is the primary extracellular acid base compensatory mechanism. This system facilitates compensatory interchanges between the respiratory system and the renal system, depending on the origin of the acid base abnormality. The use of a systematic approach to arterial blood gas analysis is the key to accurately identifying acid base disturbances. First, evaluate the pH. An increase means alkalosis, a decrease, acidosis. Based on the results, ask yourself, what is the source of my base or what is the source of my acid? Next, evaluate the PaCO2 or PCO2. For an increased PCO2, ask yourself, do I have a source of respiratory acid? For a decrease, do I have a source of respiratory base? Evaluate the HCO3, which reflects bicarbonate ions. For a decreased HCO3, ask yourself, do I have a source of metabolic acid? For an increase, do I have a source of metabolic base? Identify the primary disorder based on how you answered these questions. Finally, evaluate the presence of compensation. Let's practice this evaluation process. In example number one, pH is 7.21, PCO2 is 42 millimeters of mercury, and HCO3 is 19 milliequivalents per liter. Is the pH acid or alkaline? Since it is less than 7.35, the client has acidosis. What is the source of my acid? Do I have a source of respiratory acid? The answer is no. Excess respiratory acid would be manifested by a PCO2 greater than 45 millimeters of mercury. Do I have a source of metabolic acid? The answer is yes. The HCO3 is 19 milliequivalents per liter, which correlates with a metabolic source of acid. Is there any evidence of compensation? The answer is no. The compensatory change will follow the direction of the primary change. The primary change was a drop in HCO3. The compensatory change would be a decrease in PCO2. Since there is no compensatory change in this example, it would be interpreted as acute metabolic acidosis. In example number two, pH is 7.29, PCO2 is 33 millimeters of mercury, and HCO3 is 19 milliequivalents per liter. Since the pH is less than 7.35, the client has acidosis. Do I have a source of respiratory acid? The answer is no. Do I have a source of metabolic acid? The answer is yes. The HCO3 is low, 19 milliequivalents per liter, which validates a metabolic source of acid. Is there any evidence of compensation? The answer is yes. The PCO2 has dropped below normal and followed the same direction. This decrease is in response to the primary drop in HCO3 in an attempt to return the base acid ratio to 20 to 1. Metabolic acidosis is an acid-base disorder that results in a decreased pH due to excesses in fixed acid and marked loss of metabolic base. Fixed or non-volatile acids must be excreted by the kidneys. Examples of fixed acids are sulfuric acid and phosphoric acid. Lactic acid and keto acids normally do not affect pH unless certain circumstances exist, such as a lack of oxygen in cardiac arrest, for example, or uncontrolled diabetes mellitus that led to diabetic ketoacidosis. Loss of basic substances such as sodium hydroxide or sodium bicarbonate can be the basis for a proportionately higher presence of fixed acids in the bloodstream, resulting in metabolic acidosis. With acute metabolic acidosis, the arterial blood gas will reveal a pH that is decreased due to increased fixed acid in the bloodstream, 
and a decreased HCO3 due to consumption of the base for acid buffering. Metabolic acidosis is characterized by a low pH and a decreased HCO3. When evaluating the following examples, consider that normal readings would be a pH range from 7.35 to 7.45, PCO2 from 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury, and HCO3 from 22 to 26 milliequivalents per liter. Let's look at client number one. Client number one, pH is 7.15, PCO2 is 40 millimeters of mercury, and HCO3 is 13 milliequivalents per liter. The pH of client number one is 7.15 and is therefore acidic. At this point, you know that the client has acidosis. Now we must determine whether the origin of the acidosis is metabolic or respiratory. Since the pH and the bicarbonate are low, the origin is metabolic. Now we must analyze the ABG results for the presence of compensation. Compensatory changes always move in the same direction as the primary change. In client number one, the primary change was a drop in bicarbonate. If there is compensation, the respiratory system will increase the elimination of CO2 and the PCO2 will decrease. Client number one's PCO2 is normal, so there is clearly no compensation at this time. When there is no compensation, the disorder is referred to as acute metabolic acidosis. As the body begins to compensate by breathing off carbon dioxide, the PCO2 will begin to drop in an attempt to eliminate acid that is present in a volatile state. Let's look at client number two. Client number two, pH is 7.20, PCO2 is 30 millimeters of mercury, and HCO3 is 13 milliequivalents per liter. In this example, the pH is low and therefore the client has an acidosis. The origin is metabolic because the bicarbonate is also decreased, but the PCO2 has also dropped. Client number two does demonstrate evidence of compensation. Remember, the compensatory change always moves in the same direction as the primary change. When there is compensation, the acid-base disturbance is referred to as partially compensated metabolic acidosis. What are some of the risk factors and ideologies associated with this disorder? When the mechanism is an increase in fixed acids, risk factors include renal failure, diabetes mellitus, diabetic ketoacidosis, lactic acidosis, and overdoses of aspirin, antifreeze, or formaldehyde overdose. When the mechanism is a loss of base, risk factors include diarrhea, ileostomy, drainage from intestinal tubes or GI fistulas, medications such as acetazolamide, trade name Diamox, that block the production of HCO3, and renal tubular acidosis. The signs and symptoms of metabolic acidosis are nonspecific and affect the neurovascular, GI, respiratory, cardiovascular, and musculoskeletal systems. The most common physical findings are headache, confusion, lethargy, coma, nausea, vomiting, kusmal breathing, hyperpnea, hypotension, cardiac dysrhythmias, and bone demineralization from chronic renal disease. The diagnosis of metabolic acidosis is based on the evaluation of pH in combination with HCO3.